the city of Natori is today a virtual wasteland. There is little that remains to remind people of how this was once a scenic coastal community. After days cut off from the outside world, help has finally made it through. She's alive. Search and rescue teams ferry out the weak and injured. Many have been trapped on upper floors of half-destroyed buildings without food or water. We're looking for people who couldn't evacuate in time and had to take refuge. We're also looking for other survivors. But more often than not, teams are finding the dead. Firefighters urgently make their way to an overturned car, only to discover the woman trapped inside has passed. Thousands remain unaccounted for. With roads opened, survivors are trickling back. When the 10-meter tsunami came, Aiko Nakahashi dropped everything and ran for her life. She only just learned that her home was washed away. I've got nothing left. It's all buried underneath the ocean. All that's left of me is myself. As people pick up what belongings remain, what many can't shake are the haunting images of that day. I saw a woman being washed away and screaming for help. She was chest deep in water. If I tried to help, I would have died too. There was nothing I could do. The despair of the moment is shattered by sirens. We're just experiencing a tremor right now. It's just one of a number that we've felt in the last few minutes. There is a tsunami warning that has been issued, we're told. That's why a lot of people here are up on the bridges. We're told to get up as well. Other people are running away from the area. It underlines the anxiety that still remains here. Each warning brings search and rescue efforts to a stop, slowing down the race to find survivors. With every minute, every hour crucial, hundreds of reinforcements along with search dogs are brought in. While the waters have receded, the disaster has left this community gasping for life. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Matori, Japan.